and y. You're switching x and y. That's what you're doing. That's what the inverse does. It switches x and y. It says, well, think about it, guys. Think about it. If, if you're trying to get out what you plugged in, all you got to do is switch your x and y. Right? That's switching inputs and outputs. So to find an inverse, we just switch x and y. This undoes what was done. Does what was done. It's as simple as that. Now the problem is, the problem is, we we normally don't see functions like this, do we? We really we normally don't see that. We don't see oh here's your four points. You know do that do something with that function. We don't see that. How we normally see functions is something like this. We see f of x equals some sort of an equation here. That's typically how we see functions. Is there a way we can find the inverse for this thing? Well, I'm, I'm going to say to you that it's going to be really, really similar to this idea. In this idea, were you with me that all you got to do is switch your x and y? Because it's taking what you, what you got out and making it what, what you're, you're plugging in. Right? That, that's what it's doing. It's going to give you back your original. We can do the same thing here. Here's your steps. There's only, let's see, there's, there's four steps, but they're very, very easy steps. Number one, number one, the act of finding an inverse really comes down to can you switch x and y? The problem is, do I have a y up here right now? I don't see a y. However, some of you are saying, yeah, because you probably understand that one of these things stands for y. What up here stands for y? So instead of f of x or g of x or whatever your function is, write that as y. That's your very first step. So write as y equals instead of f of x equals or g of x equals. Write as y equals. So up here on the board, instead of f of x equals x minus 6, what am I going to have, ladies and gentlemen, please? Yeah, that's all I'm doing. I'm switching my f of x with my y. You okay with that so far? Now the next step, next step says, now you're going to go through the action of finding an inverse. Watch carefully what I'm going to do up here, all right? To go between this problem, this function, and my inverse, I had to switch my x and my y. You with me on that? I had to switch my x and I did that for every single point. How can we do that for every single point in general in a function? Well, you're going to do exactly the same thing. If finding an inverse means I'm switching my x and my y, what do I have to do here? That's going to do that for every potential point that I ever get. Are you with me on that? It's going to switch my x and y forever. So what I'm going to do is you're not moving anything around. Where you see a y, what are you now going to put? And where you see an x, what are you now going to put? That's switching your x and your y. You're making your y's x's and your x's y's. Now you have to be okay on that one. That's how you find an inverse. That's what we did here. That's what we're going to do up here as well. So step number two, you're going to switch x and y. Can somebody out there read me what I should have down on my paper, please? <laughs> Say that louder. Good. Instead of y, I can now have x. That's all I'm doing right here. I'm switching x with y. Instead of x, I have y. Very good. But the mi minus 6, that stays there. I'm not changing anything at all except for a couple things here. One, f of x becomes y. That, that's how we have to get started because we're going to switch our x and our y. We had to have a y somewhere. Then we switch these two things. We say, oh, y's now become x's. X's now become Y's. So instead of X's, you write Y's. Instead of Y's, you write X's. Not just have you okay with that. Okay. Well, well what now? We're, we're almost done. We're almost done. We have two, two little steps left. The first one takes a little bit more work than the second one. The third one takes more work than the, the fourth one. Can you solve that for Y? Yeah, that's what you're going to do now. So solve that thing for Y. It shouldn't be very hard. You shouldn't have a whole lot of steps there. So step number three, you're going to solve for Y. 
Solve for y. How do you solve this problem for y, ladies and gentlemen? So I'm going to get x plus 6 equals y. Okay, on a show of hands, how many people are with me on this so far? Good, I have a few people not, yes, no? Yeah, okay. So what we're doing, we're, we're writing our f of x as a y, no problem. The whole idea behind the inverse is you're going to switch x and y, because what you're plugging in now becomes what you're getting out. That's, that's the whole idea. So our x's become y's, our y's become x's. Then we're going to solve for y. And the last step, the last step's the easy step, because you're done. You actually have your inverse on the board right now. Here's the idea. You're going to write your y back as your function's name. So my function was the function f, yeah? I want to write this as an inverse function of f. So this is f inverse. I just have to write that. So I'm going to replace my y with f inverse, with that inverse. So instead of y, I now have f inverse of x. You've got to have the x there, it's telling me what your variable is, equals x plus 6. That's my inverse function. Raise your hand if you feel okay with how to get that thing. Now, do you want to see why it works? You want to see why it works so that it would do this every single time, that it's going to do this for you? Check it out. Give me a number between 1 and 5. Three, okay, I like three. <laughs> I want you to do this for me. Uh, plug in, plug in three here. What do you get out of if you plug in three? You get negative three. You with me? Take the negative three. I hope you're all with me on this. Take the negative three, plug it into here. What's negative three plus six? Isn't that what you plugged in originally? Do that with any number. You take ten if you want. What's ten minus six? If I plug in four, it should give me out ten. It has to do that. That's the inverse. Plug in 4, what's it going to be out? Do you see how it's undoing the whole operation of this function? It's undoing everything you started with. It's giving back what you started with. That's the idea of finding an inverse. It's not hard to do. It's not hard to do. You replace it with y. You switch your variables. That's the key step. You solve for your y, and then you replace that with your f inverse. Let's do a couple more examples. I'll give you one on your own. Talk about two more of them, and we'll, uh, we'll show you graphically what these inverses are doing, too. Find the inverse for me. If you're feeling like a rock star and you do that one really quick, why don't you try the next one? It's not any harder, uh, but we're going to do this one together in just a bit. So let's see here. So first example, well, we know that finding an inverse means somehow we're going to be switching our x with our y, right? So we're going to have to have a y up there. So the first thing you do, hopefully the first thing you did, is replace your f of x, whatever your function is, with a y. Did you all do that? Good. So up here we're going to go, okay, well, now we're going to have y equals 7 
minus x. Just a little little change there. Instead of f of x, you put y. Yes, no? Next thing is the most important thing. Now you're switching your variables. This is the act of finding an inverse. That's what we did up here with our, our simple points. That's what we're going to do here as well. So if you flip your, if you flip or so you switch those, those variables, instead of y equals 7 minus x, you're going to have x equals 7 minus y. Raise your hand if you made it that far. That's an important step there. Good. Okay. That's great. Can you solve that for y? Can you solve that for y? Because that's your next step. You need to solve this thing and get y by itself. How do you do that? You can subtract 7 if you want. Sure. You're going to get x minus 7 equals negative y. If you do that, though, check it out. You're going to get x minus 7 equals negative y. Yes? You're going to leave it negative y? No, you're going to change the sign by divided by negative 1. That means you're going to have negative x plus 7 equals y. Or you could do this a different way. Over here, you could have added y and subtracted x, you know? You could have done that, done that as well. So either way, uh, you're going to get y equals negative x plus 7. A little head nod if you made it that far. Did you make it that far? Some people yes, some people no, okay. If not, where, where did it happen? Did you make it all the way down to here? Yeah, hopefully. If you made it to here and you couldn't make it to here, it's algebra. It's, it's our basic algebra moving things around. So, so watch that next time. Be, be careful on those, that little part. If you know you're making mistakes right there, go a little bit slower next time. Try to figure that, that one out. Hey, are we done? Should I leave it as y equals? You see, we invented that y, right? It's kind of like a dummy variable. It took the place of our function so we could work with it. You have to list it back as whatever function you started with. So if we start with the function f, we better write this thing as f inverse. You see right now, this is an inverse function of that one, but it doesn't say that yet. That says we just have another function named y. You have to write this back as the, the inverse function. So instead of y, we write f inverse of x, negative x, plus 7. That's our final answer. Yes, no? Yes, you got it? Or no? Some people, yes. Yeah, everybody? That's good, all right. Do you understand the idea of why we're, why we're doing this, why we're finding an inverse? We're trying to find out what function is going to undo this one. That, that's really important for a lot of your later classes, finding an inverse function there. Now, the last one, we'll do this together, but I want your help on it. The first thing we're going to do if we have g of x equals 2x plus 3, y'all tell me what's the first thing you'd want to do here? Y. y. Great. Okay, so we're going to have y equals 2x plus 3. Very good. If we have y equals 2x plus 3, the next thing we want to do is what? Okay, switch x. Someone in one of these two rows, tell me what I should have exactly if I switch my x and my y. What's the first thing? Okay, good. So x because y becomes an x. What's, what's now? 2y plus 3. 2y plus three. Yeah, that's exactly right. Can you follow how she did that? You follow how she did it. So the x now becomes a y, the y becomes a, that's all you're doing. You're not doing any other like mathematics in your head or anything. X has become y's, y's become x's, that's it. Now, can you still solve this thing for y? Sure, let's do that. How do you do it? So x minus 3 equals 2y. You going to leave it like that? No. Nah. Yeah, we do that. If we divide both sides, that means everything, everywhere. You're going to get x minus 3 over 2 equals